Hello, my name is Josh Martin, and I'm the project manager for Purdue's Value of an Industry Pharmacist Case Competition. This is our drug development plan for our partial mu agonist called Muprofi. Our pharmaceutical company is composed of four executive members, each leading one functional area. Myself, Ronnie, Quinn, and Myra. We are all pharmacists by training, and throughout our presentation, we will be highlighting the value pharmacists bring to the drug development process. Together, we make ever true pharmaceuticals. I wanted to highlight our mission statement, which is to fulfill the needs of our patients by innovating safer alternatives to pain management. Here is our journey. It started with an idea. After an acquisition of a biotech firm, we were able to come up with a molecule that we were ready to bring to patients. But as an executive team, we did not want to stop there. We found the opioid epidemic is not just about the medication itself, but about dispensing as well. We would partnered with an engineering firm to come up with a device to safely dispense our product. This is just another way Evertrue is providing innovative and safer alternatives to pain management. Next, I want to highlight our molecule. Muprofi is a partial mu agonist that works in two innovative ways. Muprofi selectively activates the G-alpha-I pathway, which is involved in analgesia, thus reducing the beta-arrest inactivation pathway that is activated by conventional opioids currently on the market. Muprofi's general characteristics are as follows, with the primary indication for treatment of chronic pain. The lysine residue allows for a slow release through the active transport via amino acid transporters in the gut, limiting euphoria. This pro-drug formulation concept has been previously proved through other commercially successful products that has set precedent, such as Vyvanse. With this, we get a abuse deterrent and euphoria-free opioid. Everything we do at Evertrue has a purpose, all the way from the mechanism of action to the name. Mu, meaning partial mu agonist, pro, meaning pro-drug, and fi, or fi, meaning finally. Finally, a pain medication that works in two ways. Finally, a medication that works for you. The two ways include favoring the GI-alpha pathway for activation and pro-drug formulation, allowing for safer pain relief. The opioid epidemic is costly, with over $78 billion a year due to prescription opioid misuse. A majority of drug deaths can also be attributed due to prescription opioids. This number is increasing, and Americans are dying if nothing is done. Muprofi has potential to cut into the market share of other opioids such as tramadol, oxycodone, and hydrocodone due to our clinical trial results in terms of efficacy and safety. Additionally, the total number of prescriptions dispensed is on steady decline, whereas the number of opioid death is on the rise. At Evertrue, we believe the current market needs a novel therapeutic in conjunction with a dispensing device. Luckily, we are introducing both today. This is our overall timeline and roadmap for Muprofi, bench to bedside as we like to call it. We will go through this timeline throughout our presentation. Lots of innovation that started back in 2009 to today with the goal of bringing Muprofi to patients who need it the most. My name is Ronnie and this is clinical development, which is critical to assess the risk benefit profile and establish initial safety and efficacy data. Here's the clinical development timeline, all the way from early phase to late phase studies. In vitro studies demonstrate selectivity for the G protein pathway responsible for analgesia while avoiding activation of the beta restin pathway responsible for adverse reactions. Doxorudin proves to have beta restin selectivity in vitro and in vivo studies were performed to analyze toxicities in both wild type and beta restin knockout mice. Doxorudin has no noticeable respiratory suppression as compared to morphine. The G protein biased opium mu ligand improves the therapeutic index via increased analgesia with decreased adverse events. Previously, opioid agonist and antagonist combinations have been implemented in the past. However, these combinations fail to provide equal analgesia compared to the conventional opioid. Lack of toxicity with high target affinity was a key driver for the IND application. Multiple phase 1 trials were conducted throughout the development of Muprofi. In this phase 1 trial, we demonstrate safety, tolerability, PK, and PD profiles in healthy volunteers utilizing a three-part study. In a patient population of 80, we utilized a dose-finding study to understand the dosing profiles with a starting dose of 0.25 mg as determined by the no-observed adverse effect level in rat and monkey toxicological preclinical studies. Pharmacists play an integral role in early phase clinical development, such as drug regimen design, manufacturing assessment to ensure good manufacturing processes, and supply chain management, implementation and designing of drug interaction studies, understanding interpatient variability studies, evaluation of drug safety, and assessing therapy roles in current treatment standards. Pharmacists in clinical development have a key role in educating cross-functional areas on the importance of why certain strategy of dosing are implemented and key aspects of the medication use. Our phase one endpoints consisted of a variety of preliminary analgesic responses, PK profile assessment, and pharmacodynamic and metabolism studies on polymorphism variations within 
populations due to preclinical data demonstrating metabolism via the cytochrome P450 2D6 pathway. As pharmacogenetic testing becomes more prevalent in guiding clinical decisions, we believe understanding the effect of 2D6 can help guide clinician initial dosing in the future precision medicine focused field. For our phase 2 trial, we will be conducting the following DL study. We will utilize a washout study designed to facilitate accurate results since pain is subjective. This study will last two years in a patient population of 180. This is the first trial to evaluate efficacy and further develop our safety profile. Our primary endpoint was change in visual analog scale as compared to baseline. Neuprofi demonstrates efficacious results compared to placebo with a favorable safety profile. The investigator's brochure is a living document, which means that it is updated as the development program progresses and new information becomes available about safety, efficacy, and monitoring. Depicted to the right is the current investigator's brochure prior to entering phase three, providing all information about doxorin that will aid in trial implementation and success of our phase three trials. Depicted to the right is our challenge point symbol. This will be utilized throughout the presentation to represent key slides in relation to the challenge point. In order to take advantage of the market potential for Muprofi, we will utilize a three-phase approach in our market research strategy to understand how to differentiate ourselves from the competitors. The first phase is the initiation phase where we will create a realistic target product profile to be utilized during market research studies. The qualitative phase is the next phase where we will get a market landscape for the opioid market and understand the various needs and wants of Muprofi customers. The final and last key phase is the quantitative phase where we will obtain uptake from physicians and understand various factors that influence patients' buying habits to utilize in our marketing and advertising strategy and understand the endpoints that both payers and physicians prefer for a successful phase three trial. Our target product profile for Doxorin is depicted here. The target product profile will be used during market research to gain a better understanding of the market. Key factors and outcomes we will obtain via the target product profile are diverse. That range from pricing and reimbursement data, safety and efficacy claims in relation to other opioids, understanding the key differentiating factors that both payers and physicians are looking for, as well as physician uptake percentages for product usage compared to other opioids. Since pain is subjective, we will utilize a titrate to effect design to improve subject retention and to provide a more realistic picture of efficacy and safety. With this titrate to dose response, we plan to stratify results of pain relief by dose. Our inclusion and exclusion criteria are developed to attain a target population representative of the general opioid user population and also to facilitate approval as well as attaining our target indication. Our primary endpoint is the mean change in pain intensity scores on a scale of 0 to 10. Market research results were utilized to develop relevant endpoints as well as precedents set by other clinical trials to establish study design and ensure approval. We wish to attain statistically significant results that are also clinically relevant. Due to our P less than 0.001, we can say that our results are significant, that there is a 0.1% chance that these results are due to chance alone. Pharmacists support a critical role in late phase drug development. They ascertain the risk benefit profile for go no go assessments, establish complete safety profiles, design and execute clinical development plans. They develop and manage clinical study budgets, establish study milestones, and ensure accurate tracking and reporting of study metrics. They also develop and manage operational plans, including site monitoring strategy, risk mitigation strategies, site selection, study timelines, resource management, quality and supply management. Initially, we hope to gain approval in the chronic lower back pain indication, which only requires two successful trials in patients with chronic lower back pain. Eventually, we hope to obtain a general chronic pain indication. Intensive monitoring for signs of addiction, abuse, and misuse will likely be required as per FDA guidance. We will plan to incorporate a REMS program due to the FDA requirement, requirement for ER and LA products requiring a REMS program. A REMS program will likely decrease the chance for a black box warning through increased education and understanding of proper dosing strategies for Meprofi. Overall, pharmacists have an integral role in clinical pharmacology, preclinical drug discovery, safety risk benefit profile analysis, early phase development, late phase development, and clinical operations. We are the medication experts and bring the clinical expertise with the patient always first. This is Quinn, and in this section, I'm going to talk about regulatory strategies utilized for our drug approval. The regulatory affairs team has milestones side by side with clinical development. In particular, there are meetings with representatives from the FDA before each clinical trial, IND submission meetings before phase one, and a pre NDA submission before phase three. Investigational new drug, IND preparation starts at preclinical and upon completion, we will submit our IND. Key messages of the initial IND will portray favorable PK, PD, and safety profiles of Muprofi, facilitating first in human studies. 
After 30 days, we will submit to Ethics Board for any protocol adjustments or edits and facilitate post-patient enrollment to initiate Phase 1 trials. Upon completion of Phase 1 and 2, we will submit amendments to the IND if necessary. Close interactions with the FDA via the RA team will likely entail the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, Office of Drug Evaluation 2, Division of Anesthesia, Amnesia, and Addition Products. First, a pre-IND meeting with the FDA is to align on our initial IND submission with categories listed on the slide. Second, an end of phase two meeting is to evaluate CMC plans and protocols to ensure that meaningful data will be generated during phase three studies. We will also obtain advice on Pediatric Research Equity Act requirements to determine pediatric study plan, including any plan to request a deferral or waiver. Third, a pre-NDA meeting is to discuss filing and format issues. Other types of meetings may be appropriate to discuss new protocols or changes during phase three studies that affect previously agreed upon strategies. The next milestone is to submit a new drug application on NDA. The key message of submission of NDA to the FDA is to provide enough information for FDA reviewers to evaluate the drug efficacy, safety, benefit risk profile, appropriate manufacturing, labeling, and storage for approval of sale and distribution in the US. It takes about 10 months to review the NDA. NDA application will include data from pivotal studies in phase three to support approval. Third, our team will make sure to file an electronic application using ECTD formatting and follow ECTD specifications. The content should be broken into separate files according to the FDA guidance for Industry M4 Granularity Annex, Granulatory Document Annex M4 Organization of the CTD. We will not apply for an FDA expedited program because MuProfi doesn't meet criteria of one. There are other options for pain management on the market. And with the opioid crisis, it is expected that the FDA would stick with the conventional approval process to ensure safety. Another possible approach is to attain extra exclusivity bonuses and label indications is to investigate Best Pharmaceuticals for Children Act, BPCA, in pediatric patients with chronic lower back pain secondary to severe disease states. Conducting studies in children will help strengthen the data pool of efficacy and safety of mubrophy over current pain medications. Now I want to talk about two instances shocking values of industry pharmacists. The first instance is during the NDA application process. To submit a successful application, regulatory affairs professionals are responsible for designing and implementing regulatory strategy to optimally develop, license, and market products in the US. The second instance is when the RA team needs to decide on expedited programs. The task requires the team to understand similarities and differences between programs even though an expedited designation is appealing, it is essential for pharmacists to utilize analytical thinking to make an appropriate decision based on clinical data and legal interpretation. Both of these tasks require attention to details, extensive knowledge of the FDA regulations, analysis skills of clinical data, and multiple level writing skills, which your pharmacists will perform really well. The first class for abuse deterrent formulations is new molecular entities and products. Muprofi falls here due to its pro drug design. The second class is new approaches and technologies. Muprofi's abuse deterrent pill portal fits this category. Three categories of pre-market studies will be necessary for abuse deterrence evaluation. These studies are critical to ensure transparent labeling. Our labeling statement is as follows, following completion to the three pre-market studies. In conclusion, pharmacists in regulatory affairs acquire understanding of the drug development. With the skill set listed on the slide, Pharmacists are capable of facilitating drug development that meets the needs of health authorities, patients, buyers, and prescribers. The marketing and commercial section is crucial for portraying the value of Muprofi to our customers. Here's the marketing timeline from assessment potential to promotion. Currently, there is no pipeline or competitor who has the pro-drug analog along with the euphoria-resistant formulation. This market research was done in early clinical trials to give the go, no-go decision to the rest of the development team. We believe we have a blue ocean strategy, and if marketed strategically, our drug will be the gold standard for chronic pain. I wanted to highlight the value that an industry pharmacist and marketing brings to the team through the search of pipeline and current opioids on the market. Nobody understands medicine more than the pharmacists who are the medication experts. We can easily decipher if one medication has an advantageous mechanism of action against another medication and decide whether an innovative medication will be able to stack up with those therapies already in place. This decision making was in place when creating Muprofi's strategic marketing plan and our pharmacy knowledge definitely had a positive impact on its development. In terms of market research, we will obtain various attribute characteristic ratings for treatment compared to Muprofi, such as dosing, efficacy, and safety. Prior to receiving these ratings, payers, physicians, and patients will presented a product profile as previously shown. 
After values are obtained, we will normalize the product scores to percentages, and the resulting outcome will eventually guide preference share estimates of Muprofi's impact. From our market research with patients, we found that some patients who actually rely on opioids feel a stigma taking them. From our qualitative and quantitative survey results, we created a product that patients can take without feeling victimized. We found that 29% of patients use an oral prescription pain reliever to treat pain. We found that payers want a medication that is efficacious or more efficacious than other opioids on the market with a better abuse deterrence profile and a better side effect profile through our market research. Payers value decreased naloxone and hospitalizations, but realize the opioid epidemic is more than abuse alone. We took into account the recent FDA guidance on companies' ability to interact with insurers prior to drug approval with this research. In terms of market research for providers, we had physicians rank the most important attributes for an opioid. We took this information to make sure we hit each of these components with Miprofi. As a result, we found that prescribers would most likely prescribe our drug compared to other alternatives on the market. This is important information that we use to create a revenue forecast and predict uptake of Miprofi in the coming years. The positioning statement for Miprofi is shown on the slide. We wanted to highlight and include this CNN headline to show that our strategic marketing plan is meant to build awareness around the opioid problem and provide a solution, not continue being a burden. Through market research, we will raise awareness about Muprofi and garner uptake within the industry. The commercial team has pinpointed three conferences that we will attend in the next year. We hope to have a headline scientific presentation and also have the opportunities for other healthcare professionals to gain CE credits. We would like ads and publications of our trial results in these two journals which have high reputations. And finally, our drug reps will be a large part of building awareness. We want to make sure they are properly equipped and educated to speak on label. Now. As the Grizzlies Jersey Patch partner, Evertrue and Miprofi join an organization whose combination of teamwork, passion, and drive to continuous improve has led them to tremendous success. Tennessee has an opioid prescription rate higher than the national average, so we are hoping this partnership will garner awareness nationally. Additionally, market research shows the age of IndyCar viewers and the age of opioid users align, so we believe this will be a great opportunity to redefine opioid. Like we mentioned before, we want to solve the opioid epidemic with our innovative therapy. We have partnered with the National Institute of Health's HEAL initiative. Their goal is to combat problems of medications in regards to pain management. Their vision aligned perfectly with ours at Evertrue. Pharmacists are crucial to commercialization because their ability to speak on multiple levels. In this instance, the NIH is filled with PhDs and physicians who understand the robust scientific language of Buprofi. Pharmacists and commercialization can build a relationship with those in NIH, but this initiative is primary patient focus. So being able to talk on a patient's level, for example, fifth or sixth grade reading level, and reveal how Buprofi can be added to their lives will be crucial to portray the value of this medication. Pharmacists are well equipped for this communication tactic. These are the basic guidelines that exist in terms of chronic management of pain. We believe Muprofi fits as a second-line therapy for chronic pain, but as a first-line therapy when compared to other opioids. Accordingly, Muprofi can penetrate and capture a large market share in this market segment while on preferred formularies. Using market research data, we assume a patient population that will use Muprofi. We accounted for the population that will not likely be candidates for Muprofi treatment, as well as a 10% reduction in competitor market share year over year. This directly increases the Muprofi market share in following years as it penetrates the market as a superior chronic pain treatment. Estimates are from market research, however, we believe these numbers will stand true based on our background research. Using epidemiology, market research, uptake analysis, clinical studies, compliance, pricing research, along with financial analysis of current opioids, we have created a forecast for Muprofi. We utilize input from stakeholders such as nurses, specialists, payers, patients, caregivers, other KOLs, and pharmacists to create a realistic forecast. This is a summary of the value pharmacists bring to the commercial sector as I've highlighted throughout this section. This includes the industry pharmacist's ability to form partnerships. Hi, my name is Myra with Medical Affairs. I will be highlighting these areas of medical affairs in this section. To start, I would like to point out in which parts of the medical timeline medical affairs is involved in. As shown, these are the key points in the timeline in which medical affairs operates. This here is Evertrue's medical affairs team, which serves as the bridge between clinical trials and commercialization. At Evertrue, medical affairs is divided into five smaller teams. Pharmacovigilance and health economics and outcomes research, or HEOR groups, are primarily focused on post-launch studies, while the other three are active throughout the entire drug development process. Our medical science liaisons, or MSLs, managed by medical strategy, are contracted through the medical affairs company as Evertrue is on the smaller side. 
They are responsible for cultivating and maintaining relationships with key opinion leaders or KOLs, external stakeholders, and other clientele. Through our medical strategy team and MSLs, we have received invaluable feedback and assistance from these notable KOLs. The medical affairs function has closely incorporated their insight and expertise through discussion panels, teleconferences, and on-site visits. Our medical strategy team has also identified four new major KOL entities. The first include the authors of the CDC guideline for prescribing opioids for chronic pain, as it currently lacks a non-addictive opioid in its recommendations. Other KOLs are experts in the medical field as well as advocates for safe and effective pain management. Pharmacists have the ideal background for medical affairs. They not only have a strong clinical foundation, but also a flexible communication skill set they can wield to any audience. For example, pharmacists can speak on behalf of the drug at a high level for KOLs and thought leaders, as well as in patient-friendly language, essentially serving as an intersecting point for patients, providers, and payers. Furthermore, medical affairs is responsible for informing and communicating with internal stakeholders, which we identify as our MSLs, executive board, and legal support team. These three bodies will receive training, such as an onboarding process for MSLs, as well as informational seminars, documents, and in-house TED Talk style meetings in order to stay updated and informed throughout MeProfi's development. Right here is a list of the types of information that will be disseminated to external stakeholders, not internal. Throughout the entire process, competitive intelligence with MSLs have interpreted KOL feedback for review and implementation. By keeping in close contact with our KOLs, we've fostered new and existing relationships. Now, our team is poised to be actively involved in the following post-launch activities. On the right includes the conferences MSLs and executive members are gearing to present at. Moreover, Evertrue has established a call center for consumers and practitioners to contact should they have questions regarding MeProfi. The call center is manned by tele-MSLs and the pharmacovigilance team. Pharmacovigilance and HEOR groups will initiate phase four trials on MeProfi. I would like to point out that Medical Affairs is a powerhouse team of evidence-based drug representatives. Accordingly, pharmacists fit the bill. There is no one better to represent a drug product than a drug expert. This makes pharmacists perfect for post-launch involvement, especially in Congress or speaker programs. They possess an inherent understanding for patient-centric needs and are well-equipped with therapeutic and pharmacoeconomic knowledge, making them capable of addressing pragmatic concerns acquired by providers and thought leaders with evidence-based information. Right here is a cycle in which our pharmacovigilance team will perform the post-launch safety and efficacy studies. The purpose of these studies are to follow up with misuse, abuse, addiction, overdose, and other parameters regarding meprofri usage. Data collection continues indefinitely after launch, such as through FAIRS and MedWatch, and throughout the life cycle of the drug. Other phase four trials will heavily involve the HEOR team, utilizing real-world evidence data and analytics. The purpose of these trials is to study the cost-effectiveness of meprofi on the subject of financial burden from opioid dependence, hospitalizations, and prescription rates. A comparator head-to-head -head study also is planned to compare meprofi with buprenorphine in an assessment for superiority in pain management. Now, due to meprofi's extended release slash long-acting opioid analgesic indication, we are required by the FDA to conduct five key post-market studies. These studies will evaluate the risk of misuse, abuse, addiction, hyperalgesia, and the other parameters that were aforementioned earlier. All in all, I would like to summarize um, these highlighted strengths and advantages that allow pharmacists to succeed in medical affairs. We have not only an opioid epidemic on our hands, but an opioid disaster. As you can see, Americans are dying every day due to opioid misuse, abuse, and inappropriate sharing of opioids. Opioids are killing children and teens daily. There is a major crisis at hand that a medication alone will not solve. In fact, these statistics are riveting. 50.5% of people who misuse prescription opioids got them from a friend or relative. We find Meprofi offers lots of benefits that our customers are looking for, but as Afra mentioned, we still think there is more to solving the opioid epidemic than just a medication and more to maximizing our market potential. As a summary from our market research, we found that payers, providers, and patients value, and we come up with possible solutions. We found this connects with the FDA requirement of REMS on every opioid product. At Evertrue, we want to ensure the patient education by healthcare providers are providing resonates and impacts their patients. One market research study indicates 76% of patients knew little to nothing at all about treating pain. We have developed a product that will be revealed shortly that complements proper education. The direct and indirect costs of opioid overdoses are staggering. This raises the question, 
What are pharmaceutical companies doing to avoid these costs and prevent the great economic burden? The current issues with opioids are as follows. Patients that are prescribed opioid analgesics may not remember if they took their daily dose. Children and those prescribed opioids are gaining access to prescriptions that are not theirs. These issues are not going to be solved by novel formulations or novel mechanism of actions. There needs to be something much more. We need a way to control the opioid supply and access. When patients receive opioid medications, they may have leftover medications and access to these by others such as friends or family is within reach. Recently, the FDA poisoned innovation challenge to prevent and treat opioid use disorder. Not only prevent disorder, but prevent economic and social burden for all patients prescribed opioids. Specifically, Meprofi. Based on mechanism of action and slow release formulation, Meprofi is intrinsically abuse resistant. But to ensure an extra layer of protection, a novel device has been developed. With Meprofi, every individual will receive a pill bottle. The prescriber will write a prescription for chronic pain. Patients will scan their fingerprint at the doctor's office and receive education on the REMS program. If the patient tampers with the device or their prescription regimen is expired, a biodegrading agent will release and deactivate the medication. The pill bottle will prevent diversion, decrease emergency room visits, decrease hospitalizations, rehab stay, lower health care costs, and improve overall patient safety. We plan on filing a patent through the FDA 510K Class 2 approval process. In conclusion, the key aspects of the dice are provision of continuous dose reminders to prevent chasing breakthrough pain, preventing children or those that are not prescribing from using Muprofi. Displayed here is the user interaction and user experience. Here is an example of what the next generation dispensing digital label will look like with Muprofi. After entering the market, we want to continue our battle on the opioid epidemic. We hope to gain further indications, make a global focus, and redefine the opioid landscape. Thank you for watching our presentation. We hope you will join Evertrue in redefining opioid. And remember, free your pain, free your worries, choose Meprofit.